Bulletin California owns and operates approximately 7,000 streetlights. Several hundred other streetlights within the city are owned and operated by Southern California Edison. About 3,500 of the city-owned streetlights are on parallel wired circuits and about 3,500 are on series wired circuits. Most of the high pressure sodium lights on the parallel wired circuits were replaced a few years ago with much more efficient LED lights. But like many other locations in the country that have series wired street lights, the city is facing a major problem because the only company that still makes the regulated output high voltage transformers needed to power the series street light circuits does not want to continue producing them. Let's briefly review the difference between series and parallel lighting circuits. In the series circuit shown on the left, the same current flows through each lamp. Since each high pressure sodium lamp in that circuit requires about 50 volts across its terminals to operate properly, the output voltage from the transformer must be 50 volts multiplied by the number of lamps in the series string. In my neighborhood, we had about 100 street lights in a, in a series string. So the transformer output voltage for this string of lights runs at about 5,000 volts. In a simple series circuit like the one shown, if one of the lamps happened to burn out, current would stop flowing and all the lights would go out if the current stops flowing. To prevent this from happening, each lamp in the string has a cleverly designed shunt in its base. When a lamp burns out, the voltage across the shunt starts to rise and this causes a thin insulator between the two parts of the shunt to burn through allowing the current that was going through the lamp to flow through the shunt instead. But that causes a problem. With one less lamp operated, operating in the series circuit, the output voltage at the transformer is now higher than that needed for the string. To deal with that problem, electrical engineers in the late 19th century invented a transformer that automatically adjusts its output voltage to the right value. This device was called a regulated output constant current transformer, or just an RO transformer for short. The RO transformer is an electric, electromechanical device that includes one winding that can move in relation to the other winding to adjust the output voltage to the value needed to maintain the proper output current. A system of weights and magnets within the transformer housing is used to make the adjustment. The parallel lighting circuit shown on the right is much simpler. Each lamp is connected between the hot output line from a conventional transformer, labeled P in the diagram, and a ground or neutral wire labeled N in the diagram. In residential neighborhoods, the voltage on the hot line usually is either 120 volts or 240 volts. Each lamp in the parallel circuit has an individual switch operated by a photocell, which turns the lamp on when night falls and turns it off when the sun rises. One of the drawbacks of the parallel circuit is that the neutral and hot wires have some resistance. So the voltage across a lamp that is further from the transformer is less than across one that's closer to the transformer. This limits the number of lamps that can be put on the output of the transformer. This is less of a problem with LED lights that draw less current, but there's still is a limitation on the number of lights that can be powered by a single transformer. The series circuit on the left has the advantage that it's more efficient. It actually requires less power 
to produce a given amount of light from each lamp compared to the parallel circuit on the right. The series streetlight system was originally designed to power carbon arc lamps before the in invention of incandescent bulbs. Following the invention of incandescent lamps in the early 20th century, the arc lamps were replaced by incandescent lamps. The regulated output tra transformers worked very well to power these strings of incandescent bulbs. However, the incandescent bulbs had a relatively short life, whether in a series circuit or in a parallel circuit. By the mid 20th century, it became commonplace to use mercury vapor gas discharge lamps in both series and parallel street lighting circuits since these required replacing less often. Mercury vapor lamps were phased out uh, during the mid part of the 20th century because of the toxicity associated with mercury. They were replaced by high pressure sodium lamps. The high pressure sodium lamps used in the series street lights behave much differently than the incandescent lamps that were used originally in series street light circuits back in the early part of the 20th century. These high pressure sodium lamps require two additional electronic components to operate. One component is a starter circuit that provides the right voltage and current to start the gas discharge in the lamp. And the second is an electronic ballast circuit that maintains the proper voltage and current conditions after the discharge has been established. As these components age, they can produce transient voltage spikes in the series circuit that can cause the brightness of all the lights in the string to oscillate. Sometimes these transients become so large that all the lights in the circuit start pulsing on and off because the regulated output transformer can't compensate fast enough to damp out the voltage spikes. This behavior can damage the regulated output transformer. When that happens, all the lights in the string end up being off for several weeks until a replacement transformer arrives. Now with the very real prospect that replacement regulated output transformers may become unavailable, Fullerton has been looking at what it would cost to convert the series circuits to parallel circuits with LED lamps. Engineers estimate that the cost to move all 3,500 streetlights in the city that are on series circuits to parallel circuits would run more than $30 million. That is why the city has begun an experiment to determine if solar powered streetlights might be a less costly alternative. Solar powered streetlights have been available for many years now. The solar panels, battery containers, and LED luminaires were separate devices in the early solar powered streetlights. But more recently, several manufacturers have been producing solar powered streetlights with all three of these components integrated into a single package that can directly replace an existing high pressure sodium luminaire. For its solar street light test, the city of Fullerton purchased 23 integrated solar street lights like the one shown in the picture. The cost for each light was slightly more than $3,000, including tax and delivery charges. Two days prior to the installation of the solar lights, city crews rewired the series string to bypass the 23 lights that were going to be replaced. And they replaced the existing regulated output transformer with one better match to the remaining 77 high pressure sodium lamps. The modified string was tested the following night and the following day, the crews removed the 23 high pressure sodium luminaires and replace them with the integrated solar street lamps. That part of the job took only a few hours. These solar street lights have been in operation for a few days now, and they have been working well. 
They provide excellent illumination. They provide excellent illumination of the street and sidewalk with almost no light trespass elsewhere. The purpose of the test now is to see how well these lights work over the long haul. The city did not go through a formal bidding process when it purchased these lights, but they did obtain quotes from three different vendors and chose the lowest cost option. The lights chosen come with a five-year warranty, which is a good indication that the manufacturer is confident that they will function up to spec for at least that long. The component that usually fails first in solar-powered streetlights is the battery. Lithium-ion batteries are used in the streetlights that Fullerton purchased. I was not able to obtain de detailed specifications of how many charge discharge cycles these batteries are rated for. Typically, the batteries used in solar streetlight applications are rated for a minimum of 800 cycles and some are rated all the way up to 4,000 cycles. Because batteries used in solar streetlights need to provide three or four days of autonomy to cope with bad weather, they don't need to be charged every day, and manufacturers include battery management circuitry or firmware that reduces the frequency of charging, limits the charging current to a safe level, and which also prevents overcharging. This can extend the useful life of the batteries well beyond five years. The solar panels themselves generally are rated for 25 years of service. The panels gradually lose efficiency over time and the 25 year rating implies that the efficiency will not have dropped by more than 20% by that time. Fullerton is in an area with ample sunshine, so the city might be able to squeeze 30 years of service out of a solar streetlight before it needs to be replaced. The maintenance requirements for the LED light itself should be similar to those for LED lights running on parallel 120 or 240 volt circuits. Like the solar panels, the LED lights degrade slowly with time and need to be replaced when their luminosity drops to 70% of their starting value. In addition, LED streetlights sometimes fail suddenly owing to component failure in the electronic circuit that drives the lamp. Since solar panels inherently produce direct current, the drivers used in solar streetlights uh, may turn out to be a bit more reliable than those used in grid-powered LED streetlights. Of course, that depends on the quality of components used by the manufacturer. Clearly, the upfront costs for solar streetlights are far, far lower than converting series streetlights to parallel circuit LED luminaires. An additional savings re result from not having to pay for electricity to power them. The open question is how do, how do the long-term costs of the two approaches compare? If the comparison is favorable, then this may be the best way to replace a series, our series streetlight systems in those parts of the city where the tree canopy would not cause a problem for solar streetlights. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please add them to the comments section and if your community has series street lights that will need to be replaced, keep a close watch on Fullerton's experience. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe.